Caleb Kosterke here. We're back in Sealy Lake, uh, some of the best tree riding in the US. And I'm gonna teach you how to do a hop over. Oh, yeah. You're side hilling across the hill. Now, normal side hill, your foot is in this position on the board, generally depending on the hill and how you ride and if you have the right handlebar height. But your foot's here. When you do a hop over, you wanna move your foot back around six inches, and that's gonna help bring the front end up. So if the hill's steep, I'll put my foot about here. If it's not very steep, I'll move it all the way to the back. That way I get a lot of ski lift, and it makes the hop over tight and turn fast because the track isn't in the snow anymore. Your foot's in the proper location, Eyes are ahead, and you're looking for an opening in the trees to do your hop over. Now, now that my foot's in position, I'm pulling on the bars, and I'm actually gonna pull up on the bars a little bit and push down on my foot. That makes the back end wash out. And that washing is what transfers it around to make the switch back. After you get that back end to wash out and you start making that switch back, you're actually gonna turn your bars into the hill about this much, and that is gonna throw your weight to the other side. So, as you're making that switch back, turn your skis opposite of counter steering. So you wanna turn it the way you're going, and that is what makes the sled flip to the other side. And that is crucial, because at that point, that's when you hop. You have the first part of the hop over now. So now what I want you to practice is actually hopping on flat ground. So what you're gonna do, is you take this leg, you swing it back. This swing brings you up in the air, just like that. And then all you do is swing and transfer over the seat. That motion of swinging helps bring you around the seat. Let's slow the hop over down. I'm gonna go through it step by step with my sled on the hill so you can see exactly what I do. So, foot back here where we talked about having your foot coming into it. At this point right here is when I turn my skis to go uphill. So I turn my skis and that motion throws the weight of the sled onto this side, up there. But turning my skis shifts my weight over. So when I turn my skis and then time raising my leg at the right time, I get popped over the seat, and it's like, it's natural. It, it's not like I'm fighting the sled. There's not an exact time to jump over the seat. It's gonna be whenever the sled feels weightless, and when you preload yourself to get over the seat, there's no right time or wrong time. It's just whenever it feels the most natural for you. When I get to this point, and I'm in a bit of a wheelie, I either let off or grab a little bit of brake and that controls the front end, sets it back down, then I shift my weight forward on the running board, and then I pick a line up and out. So that's how you do a hop over. I'm gonna tear this hill up and just do a whole bunch of them. You guys can kinda get an idea of how it escalates from a mellow hop over like that to a really dramatic, stylish hop over where you're like forcing the sled to just look rowdy, basically. If you're not getting ski lift while you're practicing your hopovers, try moving to a steeper hill. This hill might not look very steep, but it's actually quite a bit steeper than it looks just because that's how stuff always is on camera. So give it a shot on uh, something not too steep. If you're not getting enough ski lift, try it on something steeper. If you're completely washing out and just like failing and getting stuck straight up, then try on something not quite as steep. 